Hey YouTube, how's it going? I've got the Asus Tough A15, got the Ryzen 7940HS, uh, which if you don't already know, AMD's naming scheme in this year is very confusing. Uh, the 7 means it's a Ryzen 7, uh, the 9 means that it's a Ryzen 9, and then the 4 means that it's actually a Zen 4 chip. Uh, so you'll see like a 7930, that means it's actually a Zen 3 chip, um, so actually a last year chip just being reused, last year's die, just a little bit of tweaks being reused. Um, and then the HS on the end just means that this has the slightly lower profile variant designed for slimmer and lighter laptops, which this falls into that category. You see a HX, that's like their top tier highest performance. But the 4, uh, getting one with the 4 is the most important part. It has a RTX 3050 uh, single zone RGB keyboard. 1920 by 1080p, 15.6 inch, 144 hertz screen, which if you're wanting a 16.1 inch laptop and a very similar chassis, uh, they're actually, this year they made an A16 Advan They're one of the few laptop manufacturers making an Advantage Edition all AMD laptop this year. So that's something worth looking into if you do want that 16.1 inch screen. A 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Now, I don't really do unboxings anymore, but we'll just take a quick look at the box. Asus always does have nice packaging, some really nice graphics on there. So this is definitely on the lighter side. Not quite like a Ultrabook or anything like that, but for a full-size 15.6-inch gaming laptop, pretty light. We'll go and look at the exact weight here in a second, though. So on your left side, you have most of your ports. Uh, two USB-C's. This one has up to 100 watt power delivery. This one's USB 4 with 40 megabytes per second data transfer. Uh, a USB Type A, uh, 3. Point something headphone combo jack, HDMI port, Ethernet port, and charging port. On the right side, you get another USB A port, Kensington lock, and then nothing on the back except vent. And if you take a look at the bottom here. A uh, good amount of ventilation, not like what they had two years ago where the airflow was very restricted. This guy definitely runs cool, uh, which we'll see too here in a minute. And overall build quality is, I would definitely say tough. I mean, hinges, very durable feeling, no screen wobble, very stiff keyboard deck. It's on level with the level of flex in my Legion. The keyboard is a single zone RGB that is very tactile. The trackpad is large and I don't think it's glass, but I found it enjoyable to use. Notable keyboard shortcuts are the normal ASUS media keys up top um, in your shortcut to Armory Crate, ASUS's control software. F2 and F3 change keyboard brightness. F4 changes the keyboard lighting mode. And F5 will turn on max fans. At just shy of two kilograms, it definitely comes in on the lighter side with the 240 watt charger only adding around 400 grams. It's almost half a kilogram less than the MSI Pulse 15 I just reviewed while running at similar total draw powers. While it's not quite near the Ultrabook near category like ASUS's G14 or ROG Flow, it's definitely one of the lighter options to haul to class or work if you don't mind the slightly gamery aesthetics. I was pleasantly surprised with the color gambit on the 300 nits 144Hz 1080p screen, 100% sRGB with 80% DCI-P3, the 95 watt hour battery provided an impressive 10 hour 20 minute battery live streaming YouTube. The gaming performance on battery is equally impressive, getting an average of 70 frames per second on Far Cry 6 at ultra settings. Um, it's doing this while pulling about 110 combined watts, 100-ish combined watts from the CPU and GPU. Now, you can plug in a 100 watt USB-C power delivery into the side and game without any hiccups, unlike many other laptops I've used. A, lo a lot of other gaming laptops, like my Lenovo's tend to do this, especially my Legion 7 AMD I had last year was really bad about this. They have this weird like 1% lows, really bad F frames per second drop. And I believe the reason for that is because if you're charging and you have a slight power trickle while doing that, I've read that that's not great for battery longevity. So other laptops might be abruptly cutting power when it approaches that threshold, causing really choppy, unplayable performance in games. That's my theory anyways. But the small effect it may have on battery health is a trade I would prefer to make over gaming with USB-C charging being unplayable because it's not something I'm likely to do very often, but it's nice to have that option in a pinch. The Armory Crate software should look familiar if you've 
used any of the Asus gaming laptops or watched any other videos reviewing Asus gaming laptops. To start off with, you have your silent performance turbo and also a manual performance mode. Uh, the manual mode lets you set custom power levels, uh, custom fan curves. The A15 has a MUX switch as well as Advanced Optimist for you to choose from. Love to see that. And you also have a few other options in here like your keyboard lighting customization and whether or not the panel switches to 60Hz mode when on battery. Looking at a 20 minute run of Cinebench R23 multi-core, the 7940HS averaged 79 watts with an average temperature of 91.4 degrees. Running Uni Caven for 20 minutes, the RTX 4050 averaged 81 watts and 67 degrees Celsius. The processor averaged 41 watts and 66 degrees Celsius. In the Cyberpunk benchmark, the 7940HS pulled around 45 watts power, which is represented by GPU 1 in the top left hand. Um, the MUG switch is on, but that's just the only sensor I could get a reading of the CPU power off of. And then the RTX 4050 was pulling around 90 watts. But if you rewatch this really slowly, you can see it very briefly boost up to the advertised 115. So you're looking at around 135 watts combined draw power uh, while gaming. Here I have Cyberpunk running at the ray tracing medium preset. In turbo mode, it's averaging around 60 frames per second. And the fan noise is at 54 decibels. Just for curiosity's sake, I checked the Armory Crate software because it has that built-in decibel meter. It said it was only running at 44.6 decibels. While my sound meter is far from expensive or high quality, I would say Asus is probably being a little generous here. But of course, maybe they're recording the noise from like three feet back or something where the person using the laptop would be. Switching to performance mode, we see fan noise drop down to the mid 40 decibel range for a negligible hit to performance. Switching to silent mode does give a big hit to performance, dropping the frames per second to around 45 for no appreciable change in fan noise. Using silent mode during light use, however, like web browsing, does have a noticeable effect, causing the fans to be normally inaudible, whereas in other modes they would at times kick on. Moving on to our benchmarks, first looking at the 7940HS's performance in Cinebench R23, it got a single core score of 1804 and a multi core score of 18068. That's on par with the very best case scenario for the i7 12700H Intel processor from last generation. Now, on the surface, that might not seem great, but the important thing to note here is the 12700H in the Helios 300 got those scores while pulling more than 105 watts compared to the Ryzen 7 chip running at only 80 watts. In 3D Mark, the A15 got a combined score of 8974 with a graphic score of 8598. Referencing it to our other scores here, that would mean, according to 3D Mark, it should outperform a budget RTX 3060 machine while coming in just below a top tier 3060 machine like the Helios 300. Our first video game benchmark will be Shadow the Tomb Raider at 1080p. Ultra settings, the A15 scored 2 frames better than the 2021 Legion 5 Pro with a RTX 3070, most likely thanks to its significantly better processor, and 2 frames below the Helios 300 with the RTX 3060 at a barely playable 117 frames per second. With ray tracing turned on to maximum, the A15 is 7 frames or 12% better than the 90 watt 3060 from the 2020 Nitro 5, and 4 frames or 6% below the 2022 Helios 300 with the 140 watt 3060. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1080p ultra settings, it got 70 frames in the benchmark, tying with the full power RTX 3060. In Far Cry 6 at 1080p, it got 96 frames per second. Once again, close to the 3060, but 18% below the 4060 in the Pulse 15 I just reviewed. And the A15 has the advantage of a significantly better processor, although Far Cry does seem to give an edge to Intel processors. The A15 doesn't have a 1440p or Quad HD screen, and the 4050 isn't marketed for use at Quad HD resolution. However, maybe you have an external monitor or a TV that's 1440p you want to use. And in that case, Far Cry 6, if you're playing at 1440p ultra settings, you can still expect around 70 frames per second. 
In Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p with FSR and DLSS turned off at ultra settings, A15 got 44 frames per second. Once again, I'm most tied at 44 frames with the Helios 300 and 6 frames below or 13% of RTX 4060. With ray tracing turned on, however, it's pretty ugly for all four guys on this graph, but the 4060 and 3070 Ti are at least getting into the territory where, with the help of DLSS, etc., they could probably provide a playable experience. If you want to see more performance benchmarks from the A15, make sure you subscribe. I will be recording and uploading some more. As far as pricing, I paid $1,300 full sticker price for this guy from a local micro center on the expensive end for a 50 series card, but it's kind of an odd configuration because it comes with a close to top tier processor and entry level graphics card. Kind of ideal for someone, I guess, who's looking for a machine that will excel at productivity tasks and also handle some gaming. I did find this configuration at a different website. Uh, it comes with a lower tier Ryzen 7735HS in the 4050 for $1,200. When I bought this from Micro Center, they also had an identical model, but with the 4060 for $1,400. And if I was shopping for myself, that's what I would have bought, since you're only paying $100 more for a minimum 10% jump in performance. But I haven't reviewed a 4050 machine yet, so that's why I got this guy. Overall, I imagine at the end of the year, I'll probably give this guy a solid B. I like that in a more budget-oriented machine, you still get a USB 4 port and even 100-watt USB-C charging. It also handles an impressive amount of power given its weight and thinness at just shy of 2 kilograms. Of course, my one nitpick is definitely the 15.6-inch screen. I wish they gave all of the Tufts a 16 inch screen and not just the AMD Advantage ones, but I guess they want to save that for their more premium laptops like the ROG 16 and Strix 16. After all, that 0.5 inches of screen has to cost something more, right? Like at least $10. And actually, the first SKU I've seen of the A16 Advantage just released in America at Best Buy for $1,100 with a 7735HS and 7600s, which should fall somewhere between a RTX 4050 and 4060 in terms of performance from what I've seen. Alright, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you're wondering, yes, this is a mini fridge I'm recording on top of. When you're homeless, uh, you just kind of got to work with what you got wherever you're staying. Okay, I'm not really homeless, but I travel for work, so I'm constantly, every couple months, I'm moving between Airbnbs, hotels, friends' houses, etc. So you got to kind of be flexible with the recording setup. But if you're still watching this, chances are you are one of the 1,000... 50 people, however many subscribers it is now that helped me get there. So I just want to say thank you to everyone for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. Um, I will soon be making dozens of dollars per month flowing in, which means I'm making at least like 50 cents an hour because each one of these laptop reviews takes me about 15 to 20 hours minimum of work between all the recording, editing, making the graphs. Of course, I do sometimes do other videos that don't take quite as long, like just little benchmark videos, but of course those don't really get the views either that the laptop videos make. So yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for the support, guys.